So the Spanish version is that I have, in fact, spent a lot of my life working on uh, the art of comic book storytelling, and actually very specifically focused on Latinx comic book storytellers. getting a nice representation of the different kinds of styles and experiences that are being expressed here um, for people that really get a good sense of the range of how we are in this country. This first piece here I think is really significant because um, we have, we have um, this creator, Gonzo, who starts his story uh, with the plume serpent, which in pre-Columbian um, history, right? Pre-Columbian history, mythology, mythology is the plume serpent is the one that gives life. But this plume serpent encircles a, a back history that includes an uncle and a grandfather, a great uncle and a grandfather who served in World War II as Latinos, but were never really acknowledged for their service to the country, right? So this idea of history, us being real active participants, putting that out there, but also how it gives birth, the plume serpent, to his identity as someone who has a history of very much being a part of this country, but also knowing that he is different. He has different cultural sort of rituals and experiences and roots as Gonzo, Jay Gonzo. So, yeah, this really creative way of pulling it all together. He's also the artist that did this um, kind of kaleidoscopic um, Americas, <coughs> and with all of our symbology being kind of included in this world that's opening up. Um, Miguel comes up, honks the horn, and I'm doing my homework. Enrique, maybe you've been in this situation where you've been tempted to not do something that you know you should be, right? And um, But there was something deep in me, and I didn't go, right? I didn't, I decided not to. And as the story unfolds, and I'm at home doing my work, wondering should I have gone, Miguel's older brother decided to hold up a 7-Eleven. And my, uh, my buddy didn't even know that this was going to happen. He holds up the sub. We just made payday, Manito, he tells Miguel. What the? What did you do? Right? And I'm at home thinking, you know, I, maybe I should have gone, but then also knowing kind of spider sense that maybe I, there was something wrong that was happening. As it ends up, Miguel, because he was in the car, was put in juvenile hall for accessory. And it changed everything in his life. So, you know, when I was working with the story with John Jennings, it could have been, right, so we have the money, the kind of immediate gratification, right, but then we have the kind of, I'm going to slog through this long-term kind of work. So this is Jose Cabrera, he's also in the collection, and this is a moment, so here, very different style, right, to the one that we just looked at. A lot of, like, a lot of shading and a lot of negative space to really push forward this moment that he's actually having with his father. Uh, Ivan, is very, he's Puerto Rican Latinx from New York, and he chose the colors of the Puerto Rican flag, right, as his palette. Um, and this is really like, you know, I asked him, you know, when was that moment when you identified as Latinx? He wants to leave with this affirmation. So he says, that moment I understood, si, sí, soy Latino, soy pato, soy gordo, soy pobre, soy viejo, soy etc. Y que significa, right? He, he ends with the question, and so what does that mean? I'm all of these things, and I'm much more than that, right? As Latinx, we are all um stereotyped and expected to be a certain way, but if you look at every single person's work in the show, um, you will see that there are different perspectives. We, we, all, we may have the Latino in common, but our perspectives are all different. We all grew up different, we believe different, we like different things, we, 
you know, we listen to different kind of music, we like different kind of movies. Um, so when we're stereotyped, um, that's basically what I'm saying is that there's more to us than just, you know, the Doña Maria Molde or the Dia de los Muertos, um, that we basically are who we are and, and that's for us to choose, not others to choose for us. Um, we share a lot of the same things in our culture, not just last names with the Latinx community. We share a lot of the same foods and, you know, as far as colonization reached our shores as well. So this is about community as far as, um, Growing up in Southern California, you um, obviously grew up around amongst um, a lot of Mexican cultures and stuff like that. I grew up with a Puerto Rican stepmother as well. And so again, we share the same foods, we share the same air, and then having to work in a laboring type of a situation. And um, so, which I tried to struggle to get it, you know, onto paper, as well as the Trump wall that was, that was, that was early on when he started talking about it and started slandering, you know, um, Mexico and everything like that. So. Um, and now we see where we're at with it. It's still, it's still an issue that we're dealing with that's infecting even more policy and, and messing up even more. I never saw detention caps coming. I never saw that coming. And now I put the wall with the um, barbed wire and then holy crap, there's little detention caps now. So um, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to accept that it's, that's part of our reality now. So. so for me, it was actually moving to the States I grew up in Puerto Rico, uh, and I was there until I was about 15. Um, so for me, my life is basically split in two, you know, even though at this point I've been here two-thirds of my life, or over two-thirds of my life, I still feel like a Puerto Rican in Ohio, you know, in the States. Um, so uh, in this particular story, vignette, it's all about, you know, the, the one week or so where there was that transition from, you know, moving from Puerto Rico to the States uh, and then, you know, going on this new journey. Basically, for me, the moment that sort of encapsulated the whole thing was just this panel in particular where uh, after the week, um, everybody goes back to Puerto Rico. They take the bus back to the airport. And uh, me and my brother are just left there like, oh, okay, well, yeah, this is it. Yeah. Uh, but all the racial tensions in the country, I kind of wanted to do like a cycle, like kind of like a psychological, surreal horror version, of maybe what that might be like for an immigrant. Uh, so I moved here to the States because I fled a lot of violence in my surroundings in Mexico. So it came with this kind of like weird, uh, kind of like this dysphoria, I guess, of like feeling like you're stuck between two worlds that don't fully accept you. And it was just kind of like, accept, like very pushed horror imagery and some real stuff about just like the shock of the violence that I was faced in in Mexico, but also like the racism and discrimination that I faced over here and how it's kind of like a balance between both, I guess. So I wanted the color palette to feel on these, like, unnatural, like, it's like, this should not be how things are, but they kind of are that way. Uh, it's, and, like, that's why I push, like, this real imagery, because it's, like, this abstract thing, really, like, you know, like, you're not facing everything immediately, like, at all times, it's just kind of, like, this, like, horror that happens more in your head, because like it's not like I'm being like physically berated and assaulted, even though some people are. Like I haven't personally felt that way. 